Today we're talking about something really important, how we measure quality of life around the world. But what does that even mean? Basically, quality of life is about how good or bad life is for people in different places. To figure that out, we look at a bunch of different indicators, a fancy word for things that tell us about living conditions, health, education, and more. Let's break it down. First up is infant mortality. Unfortunately, this indicator is about how many babies don't survive past their first year of life. If a lot of babies are dying young in a country, it usually means there are problems with healthcare, nutrition, or living conditions in that place. Countries with lower infant mortality rates usually have better healthcare and living conditions, so this is a big indicator of quality of life. Next is the fertility rate. This tells us how many children, on average, a woman will have in her lifetime. In some places, women have lots of kids, while in others, they have fewer. Fertility rates can tell us about family size, health care, and even how much pressure there is on resources like education in a country. Life expectancy is a big one. This is the average number of years a person is expected to live. If people in a country live to an old age, it's usually a sign that they have good health care, enough food, and safe living conditions. Higher life expectancy generally means a higher quality of life. Birth rate and death rate are two more important indicators. The birth rate is the number of babies born each year per 1,000 people, and the death rate is the number of people who die each year per 1,000 people. These rates help us understand how fast a population is growing or shrinking and can give clues about living conditions and health care in a country. Now let's talk about doubling time. This one sounds tricky, but it's actually pretty simple. Doubling time is how long it takes for a population to double in size. If a population is growing really fast, the doubling time will be shorter. This can put a lot of pressure on resources like food, water, and housing. Access to medical care is another key indicator. It's all about whether people can see a doctor when they need to and get the medicine or treatment they need. In places with good access to medical care, people tend to live healthier, longer lives. In places without it, diseases and injuries can be a lot more serious. Access to clean water is super important too. Clean water is essential for drinking, cooking, and staying healthy. If people don't have access to clean water, they're at risk for diseases and other health problems. So this is a big factor in quality of life. Next up is the literacy rate. This tells us what percentage of people can read and write. If a lot of people in a country are literate, it usually means they have access to education, which opens up lots of opportunities for better jobs and a better life. Access to education is all about whether people can go to school and learn, which is crucial for improving quality of life. Poverty rate is all about how many people in a country live in poverty, meaning they don't have enough money to meet their basic needs, like food, shelter, and clothing. A high poverty rate usually means a lower quality of life because more people are struggling to get by. Per capita income is the average amount of money earned per person in a country. It's a good indicator of how wealthy or poor a country is. Higher per capita income usually means people have more money to spend on things like food, housing, and healthcare, which leads to a higher quality of life. GDP and GDP per capita are two more important indicators. GDP stands for Gross Domestic Product, and it's the total value of all the goods and services produced in a country in a year. It's a way of measuring a country's economy. GDP per capita is the GDP divided by the number of people in the country, which gives us an idea of the average wealth of each person. Higher GDP and GDP per capita usually mean a better economy and higher quality of life. Unemployment rates tell us how many people who want to work can't find a job. High unemployment can lead to poverty and lower quality of life because people don't have the income they need to support themselves and their families. Finally, there's national debt. This is the total amount of money a country owes to lenders, 
like other countries, or financial institutions. If a country has a lot of debt, it might struggle to pay for important things, like healthcare, education, and infrastructure, which can lower quality of life. So, what's the big picture? Quality of life is measured using a bunch of different indicators, like infant mortality, life expectancy, education, and income. Each of these tells us something important about how people are living in different parts of the world. By understanding these indicators, we can get a better sense of where people are thriving and where they need more help. That's it for today's geography lesson. Next time you hear about a country's life expectancy or GDP, you'll know what it means and why it matters for the people living there.